Good morning. Welcome to week one of the Shelf Love Crate Readathon. So if you guys didn't know, I'm participating in the Shelf Love Crate Readathon. It is a readathon hosted by the book box Shelf Love Crate. Um, it's their second time doing this um, readathon and they pretty much have 12 challenges that coincide with the themes they've had every single month for this past year with their boxes. So I'm participating in it. I'll leave my announcement video and like my TBR right here if you want to check it out. But yeah, I'm going to be doing this. This readathon does last for two weeks. So I'm going to split this vlog into two because two week vlog would be just insanely long. But um, it's, it's going to be an interesting week, guys. This is going to be, I'm not exaggerating when I say this is going to be the busiest week of my whole year. Um, we're moving this week. So I'm sure you've heard tons of times we have sold our house and we've bought a new house and we are closing and things like that. So like this week is where it gets real. Like, let me just show you the state of my house right now. It's not that bad, but it's going good there. So that's my mountain of boxes right there. So I have that. Which is pretty good. We actually, that's a lot of our stuff. So this week I'm focusing on packing up like everything and getting logistics ready and like cleaning. And it's just going to be a very intense week. So participating in Riazan is not going to be the best timing, but I'm going to do my best. I picked out six books to read these two weeks. Do I think I'm going to read those six books? Absolutely not. I think at most, at most, I will get to four. And that's going to be with fingers crossed um but i'm still excited the books i want to read i'm very excited to read it's just so happening this readathon's happening during a very busy week of my life but i wanted to vlog anyway because you know it's going to be a process of moving and i want to show you that process of how not so fun it'll probably be <laughs> but either way here we are so I'm very tired. I had a very busy weekend. Um, on Saturday, I threw, I helped throw my best friend a bridal shower, which I'll show you some clips right here from that. And then right after that, uh, my husband and I finally saw Endgame. We've been waiting for like three weeks, and that was the only time we could see it before we moved. So I was like, Mom, please watch my child so I can go see the movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then yesterday was Mother's Day, so we had to go to my mom's, and we had to go to my husband's parents' house to have a big family get-together. And then Game of Thrones happened, which... <sighs> what a... I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? I'm not like a avid Game of Thrones fan. Like, I've always enjoyed the fandom. I've always kept up with it. I will tell you I've not seen every episode, but I've seen a good majority of them. And I wanted to keep up the last season because it was the last season. So I've done all my wiki research. I've done all everything. Like, I'm a very up-to-date person with things like that. But that being said, I'm not like the biggest Game of Thrones fan, but I do appreciate the fandom. I didn't love the episode. Everything happened quickly. Everything happened just not the best. I don't know. I could talk about that a whole other day. We'll watch the finale together this week, though. I'm not excited for it at all, but whatever. Um, anyway, enough about my weekend. So this week is back to business as usual. We focused mainly this on this first week on two particular books. And those two particular books are The Devouring Grave by Kristen Lynn Herman. I forget what challenges fills. I my books are all packed up and information so forgive me on that but i am buddy reading this with trina from um between chapters and amy from amy reads so i think we're gonna try to read this in five days it's a very short book and it's like a ya um sorry for the angles it's like a ya fantasy but like i would say it's more contemporary which i think i could read very quickly so that's the first one i'm gonna start well with and then i'm also gonna be reading simultaneously is king's bane by claire legrand which is the second book in her fury born series which when i picked this book for this particular week i don't know because it's over it's like 600 pages but i'm buddy reading this with julie from pages and pens we're gonna kind of read it casually so this might take the entire two weeks which i'm okay with so these are the two books i'm focusing on this week week as far as next week goes I don't know I really want to read Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I also really want to read um Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenzeller those are four books and then I think I have A Crown of Feathers by Nikki Polaprito and then the sixth book I forgot what I picked for that one maybe I picked five 
I don't remember. I need to go watch my own TBR video. How bad is that? Anyway, I need to end this clip because it's like five minutes for a freaking intro. I will update you. I'll probably update you a lot of packing and stuff like that. It's not going to be a glamorous week at all. Like, this is the most glamorous you're going to see me because I'm done pre-filming. I've, you know, I'm just getting caught up on logistics, but it's going to be an intense week. But here's hoping the ride's good and I read some and it'll be a good time. Hello. Happy Tuesday. So... Today's Tuesday, like I just said. I always put this at the worst angles for myself. I don't know why I do that, but just enjoy seeing half of my head. Um, update on reading. I have not read any of Kingsbane, which is what this camera is currently on. I am 125 pages into The Devouring Grey, which I'm very surprised about. Yay. I am really enjoying it. So, to tell you what this book is about very briefly, it's about this town called Four Paths, and we have... Um, three characters that have lived in Four Paths all their life. Then we have a newcomer named Violet come in and kind of shake things up. So Four Paths is kind of a different town in the fact that they have this thing called the Grey, which is like in Four Paths, but it's like a prison of Four Paths. So there's this beast that lives in the Grey, which is like all woods and stuff like that. And this beast is killing a lot of the people in Four Paths. And it's up to these four families to help control it. So these four families are like the founding members of Four Paths. So all their kids like have certain powers. They have to have rituals and the powers kind of correlate to help with the beast like control and things like that and to help him. So the beast is killing a lot of people right now. And then a new girl, um, named Violet, who is a founding um, member of the family, finally moved back to Four Paps. And let me help. Let me fix it. There we go. And when she comes, deaths even come more. And so it's all about them banding up together to try to defeat this beast with having it. So I would say this is a, it's reminding me a lot of the Raven Boys. I don't think the writing is nearly as beautiful as the Raven Boys because that is very flowery, very descriptive. I love the way Maggie Seabotter writes, but it reminds me in the plot where it's kind of like a temporary book steeped in with the magical realism because this town is pretty much just normal What we have this magical element of this killer beast, goldfish break time guys. Go fish, yes. Um, so there you go. Each of these kids have different powers. Like there's this one girl that has this deck of tarot cards that she can help like the cards will disappear. She's pulling them out and she'll like kind of read your future or answer your questions that you have um, asked. There's another character that um, is very powerful where he can touch things and it could be like either he could heal them or break them. We have another character that can like bring things back from the dead. Um, and then we have another character that has to do with stone. So it's very interesting. I'm only 105 pages in so it's not like too in depth yet, but we just recently got all that backstory information. I don't want to share what this book is about because half the time I was like, um, why is this town like this? But it explains it. I really enjoy it. This book has been getting mixed reviews. Like I don't think it's going to be a five star for me, but I could see it being either a three or four star at this point right now. Like right now I'm leaning more towards a four star because I'm actually enjoying how kind of dark and eerie it is. And I'm enjoying not knowing a ton of information because it just makes me curious about it so i haven't been reading a ton because of packing which let me update you on that by the way i'm gonna come along come along with me into my packing foray so i've been packing a ton i've been working on the kitchen a lot which let me tell you the kitchen is one of the most hardest places to pack because you don't want to pack it too early because you still use a lot of cups and plates and mixing bowls and things to cook. Like I'm not using eating out every day because I, I'm on a budget. So I have a meal prepped because that's just who I am. So like I have a good majority of my kitchen packed up, but there's still a good majority out that I'm still using daily. So it's like, I can't really pack it completely until like the day before, which is could be real interesting, but I'll show you what I have packed. So this whole cover, it was like mixing bowls and all that. I don't need any mixing bowls. I left out like three bowls I'm gonna use for like reheating leftovers and storing leftovers because again, you girls on a meal plan because <laughs> that's just what helps out. Here, I have pretty much packed all of this. This had like medicines and cooking oils and things like that. I left ibuprofen and my, hum my husband's stomach comes out. Um, We'll see how that goes. And here was my baking cabinet where I had all of my spices and sugars and flours. And I only left out salt, seasoned salt, pepper, and canola oil for cooking. 
the rest is gone then. <laughs> so the only, so I still have a lot of stuff. Like I can't pack up my, my I can't pack up my toaster. I use that. I use my knives a lot. Um, this is for like, this is leftover from a bridal shower through. So I'm like, I'll use that. Um, and I can't really, I'm going to start packing all of my plates and stuff. I've started working on it. Um, probably a couple days before the move. I can pack all these up, but my son uses his plates and he's pretty iffy about that. I don't know, but hard. Like I feel like I'm good at it, but I feel like I can't be a hundred percent in it because there are still a few things I use. Like for example, I just packed a lot of my cleaning supplies up. I'm like, but I still need to keep out like three or four cleaning supplies because when I take all the stuff out of here, I'm going to have to like kind of clean it a little bit because I'm not just going to leave this house in shambles. Um, so I'm just like, I can't quite close that one yet. But then I'm like, do I just set aside a tote for that? I don't like it. I, I never sold a house before. I have moved. I, this is our, my third time moving. So when I first got married, I was living with my mom, obviously. Then I moved into my apartment with my husband. So I didn't have a ton of stuff. And then we lived in our apartment for like three years. And it was like a two bedroom apartment. We still had a good amount of stuff. So we moved that to this house. For the apartment, we didn't really have to like worry about fixing things because it was an apartment. But here, since we are selling this house and we own it, we're having to like really deep clean and like every, I've, you'll probably notice me vlogging up the week though, there's nothing on the walls. Like everything's there because we've had to take it off. We've had to spackle it. We've had to sand it. We have to paint over it because you want to fill in the holes. We've had to like take down TVs that were mounted to the wall and clean that up. It's just a lot of tedious work. Like we're, I would say we're like 75% there, but that last 25% is really hard for me because I'm a person that likes to finish things. I don't like leaving open boxes. Like I have like five open boxes right now because I can't quite close them yet because I'm gonna need the stuff until like three days later. I really don't wanna start a new box for that. You don't really care about this, but it's still moving week, so I'm gonna talk about it. Um, but. Yeah, update. I'll update you probably a little bit later tonight. Hopefully, I would like to get to page 200 in The Devouring Grey and a page 100 in Kingsbane. We'll see. You say hi. Hi. Say hi, guys. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. You can give the camera a high five? Hi. <laughs> he gave you all a high five. How nice. Hello. <laughs> I can't use these. I just finished The Devouring Grey. I finished it very early. was not planning to read in two days. Wasn't expecting, but I really enjoyed it. Right now I'm sitting at a 4 out of 5. I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow about my thoughts on it and sleep on it and see if it's still 4 out of 5. But I will definitely be continuing with the series. What I can say right now is this needs to be a CW show like right now because it read like a CW show, which you can take as a good or bad thing. I enjoy some CW shows more than others, so... There's that. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Say good night, Kevin. Peace out. Who are you? Kip. Yep. Oh. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Um, it's bright and early. It's 8 a.m. and I'm already up. Um, my kid keeps waking like, up at like 6 a.m. It's not good for me because I already wake up at 5 just to like get some work in. I've already started editing this vlog. I do it like I vlog a day, then I edit the next day because I know after Sunday, I will not have any time to do that. So I want to go ahead and have it already prepped and ready to go. Um, anyway, I don't care about that. Um, last night, surprise, surprise, I finished The Devouring Grey by Kristen Lynn Herman. I think the last time I talked to you guys, I was only on page 125 and that was probably like early morning yesterday. I got to read a good chunk yesterday because I didn't like go anywhere because it was raining and stuff so we kind of just hunkered down. Um, but I was just so invested in the story that by my son's bedtime I only had like a hundred pages to go and I was like might as well just finish this thing and I did. So I've told you briefly what The Devouring Grey is all about. Like I said it's about this town called Four Paths and it's kind of a magical town where there's woods everywhere like everywhere you look there's woods and there's kind of like this called this thing called the gray which is like in four paths but not really it's like kind of a you know another forest like not like think of it like as another maybe alternate reality or just kind of subconscious i don't know but there's this beast that is lives there that it's this prison there and the whole reason that four paths was formed is because these four people from long long ago got these powers um 
to help control the beast. And these four families have that. The powers continue for like the bloodline within these families. So now we have these four teenagers that um, are part of these four founding families and they each have different powers. I told you what their powers are, I believe. And so they're not all friends. Let's just say that. They're, this town is very steeped in like politics and like this family and this family ally, but the other two families don't ally. So it's like power play too as well. So basically it's about these four teenagers. Some of them are not friends. Some of them are. And they kind of have to figure out how to destroy this beast and figure out about the town. Overall, I would give it a four out of five. I really enjoyed it much more than I was expecting to because the reviews have not been the best. They've just been mixed. Like some of my friends have given it a five. Some of my friends have given it like a two or three. So I didn't know where I was going to fall. I kind of fall right in the middle. I gave it a four out of five. I enjoyed how dark and eerie it was. It is the perfect book to read for the fall, I would say. I always seem to read like a really good eerie book in the springtime. I don't know why, but I enjoyed it. Um, the characters and how they all kind of were dealing with grief. Like these characters, some of them went through a ton of things and they also have to do with their families and like how to get their expectations met for their family because their families are so steeped in the bloodlines and like the what you're supposed to do to protect the town because that's the whole deal of these four families is you're supposed to protect the town from the beast from the gray even though there's more killings that are happening um so i would say if you're a fan of like if you're not quite a fan of fantasy books but you like a good contemporary book with a lot of magic realism and magic in it i would recommend the devouring gray i enjoyed it it is a series i will be continuing on with it there was a couple plot twists at the end i'm not spoil anything i think with fantasy books you kind of come to expect that um i enjoyed both of them didn't see either of them coming um i don't know what that says about me but um i enjoyed it and i'm excited to read the next book i love the dynamics of this town and how just weird it is like i said last night i told you guys that this needs to be a cw show the whole book read like a cw show i would say this is a mixture of riverdale i don't know what to say about that because i've heard season three of riverdale is just pure chaos i haven't watched riverdale this season but from what I've read and what I've seen the clips of, like, what is happening on that show? But it's a mixture of Riverdale with Vampire Diaries, which I have not yet watched either, but I've seen some clips as well. And a little bit of mixture of Stranger Things, because you got the whole Powers thing. So I would say if you like any of those things, pick this book up. It's not, like, 100% one of those. But like I said, it reads like a CW show, which I'm going to be honest, I'm usually a sucker for. I used to watch them a lot more. I don't watch them now. But I would just say this book reminds me of, like, a... CW show where it's dark and eerie and these teenagers have powers and don't know what to do just does not sound like a CW show that needs to happen CW where you at pick this up uh, but yeah I enjoyed it so now I am eventually now on this third day of this readathon going to finally start Kingsbane um that's upside down I have my life together I know um yeah i'm gonna start this today i don't know i would love to finish it this week if i'm really determined which i'm a de determined type of person if you haven't learned that about myself already hello um i might finish it i'm gonna really try to but we'll just have to see i need to end this clip it's like five minutes either way i will update you soon <laughs> I significantly look worse. Yay. Um, can you tell I'm stressed out? Can you tell I have gray hairs? I got a lot of gray hairs right now. I don't have time to get my hair done, so just pretend they're not there. Because it's really short. Mm, anyway, I am on page... What page am I on? 50! Man, I've really read a lot today of Kingsbane. So, I've been pretty vague about Kingsbane because it is the sequel to Furyborn by Paragon, which is right here. How beautiful. Um, so I read Furyborn last year. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I think maybe it was probably like a 3.5. Furyborn, in a nutshell, is about... There's 
been prophesized for these two queens. One is a sun queen that's supposed to bring light and she's supposed to, you know, be good. And there's a blood queen who's supposed to be kind of evil. So uh, two characters. The first one is named Rael and she has a lot of powers and she's in love with this prince. And basically she reveals her powers to everyone and she has to go through trials to prove that she will be the sun queen. And then 1200 years later, I believe, that's our second storyline. We follow a character named Elena, I believe. Eliana, who is kind of like an assassin and... She learns too that she is, um, that she has powers as well. I don't know if I could tell you anything more on it. Basically, one of them's the Sun Queen, one of them's the Blood Queen. Maybe things get mixed up. Mm. In love about Fury Born is I didn't like the character Elena. I really didn't find her story interesting. I loved Orange. I loved Rael. I loved reading about her, and I'm feeling the same exact way in this book. Every time it gets to Elena's chapter, I'm just like, mm, but I'm much more invested in Rael. I will say too that I'm pretty sure Fury Born is very steamy for YA. It's reminding me of a Saturday Mass Mass novel where it's like marketed as YA when I really kind of see it as new adult almost adult. So just so you're forewarned I'm pretty sure I would market this as new adult. There's a lot of sexual times in it. Um, but I'm liking it so far. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to give this three or four as well. I'm on page 50 and my plan is tonight to get to page 100. Maybe 150 if I'm feeling lucky. Doubt it. Um, I might not vlog tomorrow because tomorrow was very busy with house stuff with closings and just so much crap. It's ridiculous. So I'll probably vlog on Friday. Maybe I'll vlog tomorrow. I can't promise anything but um yeah that's where i'm at right now and that's my update for today which is today's wednesday right um, my mind is gone today's a really stress-filled day like with a lot of stress things with house things and mostly house things and i have nothing to say about today no updates Just letting you know today's not the best day so see you tomorrow hopefully with a better and brighter attitude and not so stress filled. You are most definitely not on a Hot Wheels playset. You are. Friday now. I'm sorry for my really not the best vlog yesterday. I think I just said, like, it's been a crappy day. I'm not vlogging today. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, yesterday was a very tough day. Um, just a lot of scheduling, a lot of things like that. So, yesterday we had our final walkthrough of our current house, and we were supposed to have an appointment, and then it got messed up. So, I had to do it later, and I had to, like, I had to have. I had to have Noah and the dog and it was just hard and then we officially closed then we officially closed on this house um yesterday so as far as us as sellers wise um so I had to take Noah all the way I had to take he's coughing as you can hear um I had to take him to his grandparents which they're just getting over cold which is unfortunate because I think he's got it which I'm just like Great, perfect timing. Um, so I probably shouldn't have done that. I feel bad about that because I'm like, here, can you watch my kid for like an hour? Can I go close? Even though they were kind of sick. But I didn't know what else to do because I knew I couldn't take him to closing because he would have just been crazy. But um, I hope he doesn't get like too, too sick. I hope it's just like a cough and a little cold. Otherwise, that would just be the worst timing, which I wouldn't be surprised at at all with my luck with sickness with him. Um, but just hope for speedy recovery for him and hopefully that it's not too bad. Actually closed on this house. Luckily, we get to stay in it for a few more days. But today is a day of like errands, of getting groceries, things like that. Um, bless you. Um, I have to pack up the good majority of the kitchen. I've done that. Like there's all my pots have been, all my pots and pans have been packed up except for like two that I'm going to use for like the next three days. Um, which is just, I hate that because I want to pack it all up, but I'm like, I need this for like a dish for Noah. So yeah, it's in the, we're in the like literal countdown of like two days until everything's like done. So I feel like I have not gotten anything accomplished packing wise, but I know I have. It's just getting that last little bit. Um, but anyway, you're not here for that. Sorry for the bad lighting. It is what it is. You're here for reading. I'm on page 150 of King's Vein. I have just been this. I will say this has been the worst read a vlog I've ever had. I've never. Um, here we go. That's a little bit better. Um, I've never read this little for a readathon. Usually I'm very good, but I expected this because I'm moving. I don't know what else to say about it other than do a lot better than I expected to. So there's that. My plan is to get to page 300. I think it's like a 600 page book. So my plan is to get to page 300 by tomorrow night. And I also want to tell you guys, I will be ending the vlog for week one tomorrow. I know it ends I think week one technically ends on Sunday. I, there's no way I'm gonna walk on Sunday. We're packing everything and it's gonna be a madhouse here. So, and I'm not gonna have internet for a day 
in the new house so I'm gonna have to go ahead and get this edited which I have so don't think it's very stressful I've already got this edited up until what you're seeing like I do day by day um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this edited I've already like made the thumbnail if you think I'm a workaholic you're 100% right that's just how I am that's how I operate I'm very organized and I like to have things prepped ahead of time so don't think I'm like super stressed about it I'm super stressed because of moving and I'm just usually stressed so don't think it's like in, I'm adding extra things on me I had already planned for all this so yeah I won't be vlogging Sunday at all Saturday I will be vlogging a little bit because Matt and I will have to move everything from upstairs to downstairs and officially like pack everything like 95% of everything so here's the hoping with that um I feel so bad that he's sick let's just hope it doesn't get worse just an update of how many boxes we have it's like four layers deep we also have some over here this is not even all of it we have a lot what are you doing Matt? Just watching the breakfast. hello um I'm driving, obviously. I'm being safe, so don't worry. I'm going really slow. Um, happy Saturday. So today, um, it's only 9 a.m. and I've already done a lot. I've been up since 4.30. If you're wondering why, I will tell you. Um, so my son, I told you guys yesterday he was getting a little bit sick. He's, he was coughing a lot and he woke up at 4.30 this morning and he's fine. He just couldn't go back to sleep. He's just coughing. So I think it's going to be the beginnings of a cold, which should be great and fun and great timing. So I've been up since 4.30 and I just got done with a photo shoot because I love just overworking myself. But no, it was fine. It was a great family. Um, I did their wedding like years ago. Um, like when I was first starting photography like 10 years ago that's how long I've been doing it and so it was really fun seeing all of their kids grown up and go off to college and it's just a lot of fun I love it but um, I'm not gonna lie to you I'm very tired right now <laughs> so today's goal is to just pack and move everything from upstairs downstairs is this where I need to turn? I think so but hopefully it won't go anywhere I'm probably yeah we're gonna do all that so I'm probably gonna end this vlog right now because I just I'm not reading a lot I've gotten to page 300 of what book am I reading? Um, Kingsbane. And I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. It's just, I didn't love Furyborn, so I'm not surprised I'm not loving it, but it's just taking me so long to read it because the plot is very dense and I don't love one character over the other. I've told you what it's about. It's basically about two queens. One's evil, one's good, and it's like set in alternating time. So I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. As predicted, I'm not doing well with this readathon at all. I've read one book so far and I'm halfway through another, but Kingsbane is 600 pages. Why I picked that for this, I I don't know. I'm just stupid. Um, but yeah, today I'm not going to be doing much other than packing. And then tomorrow we're loading the trucks. We're having a whole bunch of people over to help, help load the trucks so I won't have time to vlog or read. And Game of Thrones comes on tomorrow night. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to read any more this week because I just don't think that's probable or realistic. So yeah, I'm sorry I'm going to end this vlog now but I will be vlogging like starting Monday for the next week so be on the lookout for that um, but yeah I'm sorry I'm so sorry for the really bad vlog but it's just life with moving and everything right now I might film some more after today but this probably will be the end clip and I hope that's okay please forgive me but hopefully next week will be better I'll be in a new house you get to see me unpack and if you're wondering I'm filming a separate video only on just me packing my bookshelves it's a lot of montages I've already started working on it so it's just gonna be me packing my bookshelves and then me setting up my new bookshelf so that's fun but yeah again I'm at a stoplight so I'm at a stop sign so again I'm really sorry for the quality of this vlog please forgive me um every vlog's not like this every readathon I do usually good with not this week apparently but oh well thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week hopefully in a lot better spirits a little bit settled and hopefully with more reading so I'm sorry bye